Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. I, the teacher, when king over Israel in Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun, and see all is vanity and a chasing after wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me. And who knows whether they will be wise or foolish, yet they will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair, concentrating all the toil of my labors under the sun, because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all of their days are full of pain, and their work is a vexation. Even at night their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for the day is 49, and we will read it in unison. Hear this, all you peoples. Hearken, all you who dwell in the world. You of high degree and low, rich and poor together, 
My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall mediate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb, and set forth my riddle upon the harp. Why should I be afraid in evil days, when the wickedness of those at my heels surrounds me? The wickedness of those who put their trust in their goods and boast of their great riches. We can never ransom ourselves or deliver to God the price of our life. For the ransom of our life is so great that we should never have enough to pay it in order to live forever and ever and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, like the dull and stupid they perish, and leave their wealth to those who come after them. Their graves shall be their homes forever, their dwelling places from generation to generation, though they call the lands after their own names. Even though honored, they cannot live forever. They are like the beasts that perish. A reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord.
Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. There were two sermons written for today. The first is the one you're going to hear. The second was the one I was going to give when I won the one plus billion dollar lottery. <laughs> and we'll save that one for later. Two of those one plus billion bucks are mine, though. I don't normally do that, but it sure was fun to think about. And now, when I woke up on Saturday morning, I realized, think of the tax burden I have avoided. (laughs) Greed. Can't believe the lessons turn up on a day like today. It's hard for me to think about greed without rocketing back to the mid-90s movie classic Wall Street. You seen that one? Michael Douglas won the Academy Award for it, playing a character named Gordon Gecko. It just sounds greedy already. At a shareholder meeting, he comes for a company and intends to grab them with a hostile takeover, and here's what he says. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Greed clarifies, cuts through, and captures the essence of the evolutionary spirit. Greed in all its forms, greed for life, for money, for love, for knowledge, has marked the upward surge of mankind. And greed, you mark my words, will not only save you, but that other malfunctioning corporation called the USA. Of course, it's a cautionary tale because Gecko is an insider trader and he's a huckster and he acquires all kinds of stuff and manages to drag a bunch of people along with him, including his unwitting protege named Buddy Fox, another well-picked name, sly one. And in the Hollywood ending, of course, Greed doesn't save him and he goes to jail. Fast forward to somewhere in 2010, there was, a, there was a sequel. Gecko gets out of prison, and he's back to his old tricks, but the tagline is this. He says, someone reminded me that I once said greed is good. Now it seems it's legal. <laughs> yeah. Charlatans of all kinds don't ever go away for good. They just resurface with a different angle, a different promise. History is full of those cautionary tales, but repackaged, get-rich-quick schemes are so sly and enticing. 
If the rules don't serve the huckster, the huckster gets in the pockets of those who change the rules. As we've heard, our Bible and our hymnody are certainly not soft on this topic. It's loaded with poems and stories and songs and other kinds of entreaties that expose the deep and destructive desire that our inmost parts have to acquire, to have, to achieve more, and to claim credit for everything we've, quote, earned. Now, I admit right here and now that my first word in this world was more. <laughs> I'll let you draw your own conclusions, but the context was I was seeking more green beans. That's a true story. We all struggle with a need for security and survival, though, against the empty and soul-crushing material wants, and True enough, the evolutionary reality of survival is important, but there's tension there. If we want to really examine where we are, we can look at our, our bank statements as sort of a map to tell us about our choices and our journey through life. Mine seems to lead through an awful lot of grocery stores. So when we get to today's gospel, Jesus is asked to settle a family matter. The brother is seeking an equal division of inherited assets. Jesus kind of sees the question behind the question and doesn't play ball. The backstory is that brothers shouldn't need to ask for an equal division of assets because in that day, brothers didn't split assets. The older brother got them and the younger brother depended on his benevolence. This man was not entitled to anything. And yet he seizes on, on what he knows of Jesus' kind of communitarian-minded spirit and his lovey-dovey shareness and how we're all just a one big family. And he suggests a possible rule change. Really? I mean, with the human God right there in front of him, this man plays the angle. Let's see if we can change the rules. Cut me in. He's so human it hurts. I wish I'd thought of that. So Jesus doesn't go along. Instead, he tells of the rich person who's so good at business that he builds bigger storage units to hold all of his stuff. Incidentally, you know, the largest building boom in the country in the last 20 years has been storage space. Full of things that we don't need. Anyway, having done so, the man's built these bigger storage units, and he says to himself, wow, I can finally relax and enjoy my insulation and isolation from need. I'm going to be all right. Time to party. Sure, there'll be people who see these large storage units and come begging, as they say, when someone wins the lottery, that's where you find all of your long-lost family members. So with, with wealth brings power of choice and he can build a fence and a gate and get a guard and limit his exposure. But Jesus plays it out further and says, God, God says to the man, well, this is the last day of your life. Good work. You've built up all this stuff. Now it's going to be argued about as inheritance. The Brinks truck does not follow the hearse, my father says, as he spends money. He goes on to say, it might have been good to think about richness toward God. Now that phrase is kind of loaded, and rich toward God sounds sort of like, well, let's just get rich toward God. We'll be more spiritual, more philosophically close. Maybe we'll do some more meditation or take some longer retreats, learn to be silent, something I will never do. But really, what that really means, if you translate it right, is it is a practical thing, a practice of seeing the suffering of others and helping. That was, means enriching the people of God, not by material, but by necessity. So Jesus tells us time and time again, and we forget time and time again, which is why we talk about this often, is that we are in this together in whatever time we have, with whatever abilities we have, with whatever stuff we have. 
And none of what we claim to have, we really have. Because we don't get to keep anything, really. Stuff is fluff. Rich toward God is rich toward the suffering. So after the service, I will undoubtedly drive over to uh, the market. Uh, I will slide by Brownsville Market, and I'll slide by the sausage biscuit uh, counter, and I'll buy a New York Times, and inevitably I will read through the obituaries (laughs) at some point, because I do that, because it's something life-affirming. It it enumerates family members and achievements and memberships and leadership positions and all the messiness of someone's life is edited out, so that's left to your imagination, you know. But at the end, in the end, usually folks have a memorial gift opportunity. That'll tell me about their passions, their interests, and what actually might last. That can be anything from, you know, pet rescue to disease research. But those last words tend to point to what really matters and mattered to that person beside family, which is in the first chunk. So when Gordon Gecko proclaims that greed works, I mean, kudos to him for saying it. It was an attractive thought, even if it's wrong, because really, we really would love for greed to work, wouldn't we? It'd be amazing. Of course, we'd be at each other's throats more often than we actually really already are. But it's not really greed that works in that sentence. If you think about it, if you think about what he says, really it is love that works, love that clarifies, love that cuts through, love that captures the essence of the human and Holy Spirit at work together. Our net worth is established at the cross before we earn a dime. So do we go away feeling guilty today? Is this just an early stewardship preview? Hardly. The fact is we're all capable of being philanthropists. I remember someone telling me that at once when I was younger. Philanthropists? That's what, you know, that's Rockefeller. That's those folks. But it's it's not only a word that applies to foundations and grant making cycles. Really the meaning of it is giving what out of to what you love. Philanthropy, handing off the holiness of stuff. Love doesn't need storage space. It has no expiration date and an amazing rate of return. Getting may be fun, but giving is much more fun, more generative and more joy-inducing. Ask any kid who's ever made a best dad ever mug and tried to wait until Father's Day. That's something we ought to get a hold of. Finally, a a person who who speaks kind of counter to that is, is one who's made buckets of money telling us all about, or creating stories all about what we should be scared of. He plays on our passions, he plays on our weaknesses he plays on our fears of the dark and of dogs and everything else Stephen King Stephen King went through life and had a lot of ups and downs and hit bottom and finally he's realized and says they in an interview they said what would be your last words and he would say and he said all that lasts is what you pass on the rest Smoke and mirrors and scary stories. Greed, love. Go all in on love. Get rich. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, not not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son who is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on Form 6. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, especially for the victims of war and violence in Ukraine, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Susan, Jennifer, our bishops, for the Reverend Canon Mark Stevenson, bishop-elect, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially John Sandage, Jason Uhr, Carlos Gagliano, Kelvin Brindle, Daniel White, Bob and Sue Benning, Janet Crocker, Tom Duke, Harry Lankenau, Betty, Linda Marchman, Jackie Thompson, Nanette Alcaro, Jake Kirshner, Carol Collins, The Knight's Family, Natalie, Candace Sammons, Ruth and George Bryant, Brenda, Candace Moore, Betty Taylor, Rosemary Atkinson, Dan and Shirley Holler, Maggie, Henry Hopeman, Karen Mott, Doris Savage, Sarah Reynolds, and Joe Kopp. We pray for those in military service, especially for Austin, James Badgett, Thomas Garcia, Jake Hillary, Patrick Hillary, Isaiah Gerardo, Samuel Jared Lepage, Juan Munera, Catherine Munera, Austin Nicholson, Luke Scrooby, and Paul Stoneburner. We pray for Wacomico Parish, Wacomico, for our mission partner, Jefferson Area Board of the Aging. Hear us, Lord, for mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. 
Praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially Carrie Brindle and Elizabeth Woodruff. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace. God's peace. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Church. Or welcome back to Emmanuel Church. Or we're just glad you're here. Uh, John Thomas, JT, the rector. Uh, if you're new or visiting, we are just join on in. We've got uh, new, new folks' swag bags over there and fo folks to greet you at coffee hour. And that'll be lots of, uh, lots of good time just to get to know each other. If you sneak out, that's okay too. Just let us know if you want to know more about us or more uh, where you can get involved. The, uh, which brings me to a point in, we're, we're having summer school this summer in August. Uh, a couple of weeks from now, we'll have, um, we'll have two different sessions, one kind of every other week in August, and uh, called Episcopal 101, everything you wanted to know about the church, but we're afraid to ask. Uh, it's an opportunity for folks who have uh, come to the Episcopal Church recently, folks who have come to the Episcopal Church unwittingly, <laughs> and folks who have come to the Episcopal Church and forgotten everything they learned in confirmation class, which is everybody, including me. So some of this stuff I'm needing to relearn. It's just an opportunity to get grounded. Mostly it's an opportunity to ask questions. And while I say in there, we, if we don't have the answers, either we'll make them up or go find them. So it's a very Anglican thing to do. Uh, Jack, where are you? Stand up back there, buddy. Look at our uh, videographer for the day. You gotta love Jack. <laughs> kind of start him young around here. Sometimes the camera will stray, especially when cookies are mentioned, but that's all. <laughs> it's okay. A um, uh, couple of, of, of pertinent announcements. Uh, first, uh, a great gift to us is announced in the back of the bulletin and even right on the back masthead uh, that our very own Jennifer Smith, who has been an able, wonderful spouse and volunteer, is now actually a real live member of our staff here at Emmanuel Church, focusing on ministries with children and young people. So that is a huge piece for us, and it's a big, important part of our life, and uh, one that we have ebbed and flowed in before, but I had this management principle that basically the grass is greener where you water it. We're going to be watering that grass a lot more and a lot more intentionally around here, so we look forward to those opportunities. Thanks, Jennifer, for saying yes. 
Yeah. Uh, Chuck, you have an announcement about Shrinemont, which is darn near full. So you better walk, don't run to register. Uh, you and me both. Yeah. This is this is he's the this is the heritage announcement. I can tell. This T-shirt on the front says uh, Emmanuel Episcopal Church 2002. <laughs> Our first year 2002. This will be our 20th anniversary. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, it's called a retreat. I call it a family reunion. And annually we get together and we learn things about people that we didn't know before but just coming to church. On the back of it it says, I spent the weekend at God's grandma's house. <laughs> it's a special place. I've been there every year but one. I missed last year, and when I say missed, I really miss it. Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, I kept thinking, what fun those people are having over there? Here I am sitting at home. <laughs> so, those of the Allen Den know that you can do anything you want to do or not. There are a lot of things on the program that you can do, a lot of options. You sit on the rock and sit on the porch and rock and chair and read and do nothing all weekend. You swim and do many other things. So I suggest that if you haven't gone, it's a good opportunity to learn about that place. Last word is that Chris sent me an email yesterday and says, the good news is we're almost sold out. We've got only a handful of rooms left. And anybody who wants to go needs to email her so you can get on with a handful of rooms to the left. And her email address is Christine with a K4 at Gmail. Thank you, folks. Thank you. <laughs> and by the way, if you need that email or want to sign up, you can also hit info at emmanuelgreenwood.org. We'll connect you or call the church or whatever. Our phones have been wonky lately, so if you've called and left a message, we, we, re, we may get them eventually, but they don't, they're, we're having trouble. So we're, this storm thing has really kind of crossed wires out here in the country where we have to get the gerbils to run really fast on the treadmills just to keep things going sometimes. So that's the way it is. Uh, but my cell phone number is in here if you ever need anything emergently, certainly use that and uh, I'll answer or respond quickly. Are there any other announcements for the good of the cause? Diane. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am excited to announce that our third annual holiday market will be Saturday, November. That's right. And uh, Susan Duke and uh, Catherine Capshaw and Jennifer Smith and Frida and I have been working hard and we are really excited that the team is growing, that the level of support and participation has grown. And so we're really excited. Hopefully Steve is going to be fun with pizza again. Um, but Susan's going to have an announcement in the bulletin this week um, with contact information. But we're really excited at how this has grown. And if you haven't come to it, I think you're going to be thrilled. It's a lot of fun and it brings all of us together to create wonderful things. That's good. I can sleep a little later that day. We've expanded the parking. Yes. Because, believe it or not, we filled up plus. So we'll, we'll need parking people, too. Thank you, Diane, and that's exciting. Uh, third annual holiday market. Get all your shopping done, and uh, you'll support local artisans and have a good time. See people, too. All right. Birthdays or anniversaries. Yes, ma'am, Miss Carolyn Stone. Eighty-six. Go on. Eighty-six. Long time. Wow. 
Wow. Janice Thomas. Well, I know where this is going. And because tomorrow is my birthday, and I tend to know who shares my birthday, I know Norman Moore is celebrating another birthday. Yeah. Oh, thank you. This is the pew for the 80 girls. I'm the 84. Yeah, we, we need to put a little golly. That's 170 years in one pew, just with the two of you. We need to like put a brass plaque on that one that says the Ocho or something. In it. Golly, longevity is a is a thing. My gosh, it's everywhere. Last week we had nobody. Now we have them all. Julia. All right. Yes. Yes. E. O. Woodson, 91. There again, I keep saying this a lot of times. I'm not saying you're going to live a long time if you come to Emmanuel Church. <laughs> but would you want to take that chance? Arlene! A birthday, yes. <laughs> Dave? Hey! I got a preview of coming attractions last week. I want a blow by blow afterwards. That's awesome. Congratulations, Nick. We'll look forward to celebrating around you. Joanne. Joe Cop, 86 years old. Who else? We've got to have Eucharist at some point. I don't know. Jim Crosby? Today is our anniversary. 41st anniversary. 41. It's looking good. Anything else? Golly. We got a lot to celebrate. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as they begin a year or another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift your hands to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! The table of God is now made ready. So come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more, you who have been here often, and you who have not been here for a while, you who have tried to follow Jesus, and all of us who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit. Be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Finally, my friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and always. Amen.